kind way. Thank you. <clears throat> a young musician, a young musician living in, a, in an isolated community in Labrador, here's, here's Miles Davis on the CBC, and she thinks to herself, you know what, I think I'd really like to learn to do that. I'd really like to learn to play some jazz. But unfortunately, there's no music teacher in her community, and there are no jazz musicians in her community to be spoken of either. The closest opportunity she has to learn jazz is a one-hour flight or a 10-hour snowmobile ride away. So she's virtually powerless to pursue her interest in jazz. <coughs> Fact is that many musicians, many young people in Newfoundland and Labrador are in that situation. They, they don't have a whole lot of control over their learning, their musical learning, if they're living in some rural and isolated communities. But when we introduce the internet into that, we get things change. We have two learning environments that students can, can control their learning from. We have an offline environment of their communities, and we have an online environment of the internet. And today, we're going to have a quick look at, at both of these communities and how, that, how they can empower the students, how they can let students take control of their own learning, uh, musical learning. Now, but before I do that, I want to talk to you a little bit about my beautiful home, the Canadian province of Newfoundland and Labrador. Because it's here, with our geographical isolation and our demand for educational equity, that we've been compelled to push the limits, to push the boundaries of online music education. Newfoundland and Labrador can be found on the eastern coast of Canada. Europeans came here for excellent fishing grounds, and in the early days of European settlement, they established small fishing villages all around the coast of our province. The region was also inhabited at the time with, with uh, uh, First Nations peoples who lived here for thousands of years as well. The passing of time saw some population centralization, but for the most part, many of these small isolated communities remained, and they remain today. <clears throat> Each town has its connection to the old country. Some towns are French, some towns are English, some towns are Scottish, and, and so on. And when the, when the settlers came over, they brought their music with them when they came across the Atlantic. Each town had its own small learning community, its own musical learning community. And within those learning communities, they played their own music. And it was a rare opportunity for new ideas to be introduced into these isolated fishing villages, unless through a uh, visiting schooner or a, a traveling salesman. And the, the people who lived in these communities, they, they didn't go outside a whole lot either. They, they didn't get outside to be exposed to new musical ideas. And this isolation, it acted as an incubator for music development in these small, um, uh, offline music communities. Now, despite this interesting musical heritage, things were challenging for young musicians in these, these isolated communities. If a young person was lucky enough to find a musician who was willing to help them learn some music, the, the genres, the instrumentation, the level of musicianship was most likely quite limited. Despite this and other limitations, there are countless examples of, of incredible offline traditional educational programs throughout our province. And I'm going to speak to you a little bit about one of those today. I grew up in the very small coastal community of Spaniards Bay. And Spaniards Bay, the region of Spaniards Bay, had only a handful of fiddle players, traditional fiddle players, and they played traditional Newfoundland Labrador folk music of, specifically of, of Irish descent, Irish origin. And in that community, in that region of Spaniards Bay, we had one amazing fiddle, fiddle teacher, my father, Rendell. Now, Dad is very passionate about uh, music education, especially when it comes to the fiddle and Newfoundland Labrador folk music. And he'll share his love of that, of the instrument and the music, with anybody who'll listen to him. Now, over the decades, Dad was able to welcome in many, many young musicians into the, the, music, the music community that was in our local area, that offline music community. He helped them find their skills and their confidence and their knowledge to be contributing members of that that offline, localized music community. Now, as I said, in the 70s, the number of fiddle players in the region could be counted on one hand. Today, within a 30-minute drive radius of my father's house, the music community has grown to over 500 active fiddle players. I think that's pretty amazing. 
Now, my father would be the first to say that he's not the only factor in the propagation of fiddle playing in the region. That being said, there's no doubt he is the champion that unfortunately is missing in many, many rural communities throughout our province. The online music learning community is not meant to replace that. The internet is not meant to replace it. The internet is meant to provide options. It's meant to provide students with opportunities to look outside of their geographical region, their, their offline music community. Now, as we've seen already, uh, many of the towns in Newfoundland and Labrador are quite, well, quite isolated. And many of these small towns, the population is so low, it makes staffing in local schools quite a challenge. <clears throat> Gray River, for example, Gray, the beautiful Gray River. It's got a school population of 15 students from kindergarten to grade 12. So 15 students in, in school, it, it would make it very difficult in a school like Gray River to have specialized teachers in a wide variety of, of courses. The government of Newfoundland Labrador champions the idea that every student in our province has the right to equal access to the best education possible. And to ensure this educational equity, the provincial government has created the Center for Distance Learning and Innovation, or CDLI. CDLI provides, uses the internet to provide um, a wide range of high school courses to students in rural and isolated communities throughout our province. And I, I'm an online music teacher for CDLI. Now the teachers at CDLI, we are now the curators of the online learning environment. Just like my father was a curator of the offline learning environment in Spaniards Bay, we now help with the online, one, online learning environment online. A typical online class for me would have students from all parts of the province, several schools, all connected together, all at the same time, um, almost as if sitting together in, in the same room. And we encourage interaction between students, and we go to great lengths to ensure the health of our online community. And students are encouraged to look outside of, the, of their offline community, but also outside of their online community as well, to try to find new learning opportunities and bring those learning opportunities back to both communities and share. Ashley Faith, she joined our online community in 2005 from her hometown in Hickman's Harbor. By making use of her offline resources in Hickman's Harbor, as well as some uh, as resources she was able to access on the internet, she became a very strong singer and songwriter. She realized quickly that the internet allowed her to collaborate, collaborate with musicians anywhere in the world. So she got online, she made friends, and she co-wrote music. She also realized that Social media and digital, digital distribution allowed her to get her music out to a worldwide audience. At age 18, something really interesting happened to Ashley. One of the songs that she co-wrote was picked up by the video game manufacturer Konami and was included on the Dance Dance Revolution video game series. And to date, her song has sold over 750,000 copies. Just like the music communities of our ancestors, our online community can also become limited in its reach. New ideas need to be introduced into this community consistently to make sure that it grows and it changes. Video conferencing is a technology we use to, to achieve that. All the schools that we work with throughout our province are equipped with high-end video conferencing equipment. It allows us to, to let students come together in a fully interactive environment. Now you just think a second, think for a second about that, that infrastructure. We have all these schools in the province, and students can get together almost as if sitting in the same room wherever they are. Learning opportunities are incredible. Now, attending live performances and interacting with experienced musicians is, a, is an important part of the development of a young musician for obvious reasons. Rural communities in Newfoundland and Labrador are rarely visited by mainstream musicians. Francois on the south coast, it has a population of 109. And you only get there by boat on a decent day. So, Video conferencing allows us to bring high quality musicians into schools like the schools in Francois. We've created partnerships with organizations like Debut Atlantic and the Canadian Association of Recording Arts and Sciences to have access to amazing world-class musicians that we can bring to these isolated communities virtually. 
And the musicians, when they interact with the students, this is just like they're sitting in the same room. They can talk with the students and the students can talk back. They can exchange ideas and, and the students or the musicians can perform for each other freely. Very exciting. These artists, they join our online music community and they make invaluable contributions that affect the mem all members of that community. We recently had a session with Joel Plaskett. Now, Joel is a, an amazing singer and songwriter based out of Halifax, Nova Scotia. When Joel, Joel came online with us, he had an opportunity to work with Darla in Little Bay Islands. Now, Little Bay Islands has a school population of four students. Well, actually, it's only two, because last year, two graduated. <laughs> but when this story took place, there were four, Darla being one of them. When Darla told Joel about her school population, he said, wow, that's amazing, four students. And I agree, that, that was ama it's amazing. It's, it's amazing that Darla, sitting in a school with four students, can have Joel Plaskett sit with her and work with her on her music. That is amazing. Now, Darla's no slouch, she's quite a musician. So when she played for Joel, Joel said, wow, that's amazing. Actually, he said, that's amazing, you need to make a record. Darla was being validated by Joel Plaskett. It's not like her mom or her friends were saying, my Darla, you're something good. <laughs> this, this was a professional musician validating her efforts. And we've had many incredible learning opportunities with this sort of technology. We also had Jan Leschetsky the incredible 16-year-old piano virtuoso from Calgary. He took time out of his international touring schedule to come online with us, and he, he played his piano for us, amazing. He talked to the students, and he talked about life as a 16-year-old traveling the world playing his piano. We also had one of our young songwriters in Red Bay who had the opportunity to perform an original piece of music for the, the members of Great Big Sea. And we had the pop musician Danny Fernandez. He joined us from Toronto, and he, he pushed the tables back in the studio, and he did some of his hot dance moves <laughs> for, from his music videos. That was crazy. And we also had the incredible Lights. She joined us from Calgary. Uh, Lights is an amazing singer and songwriter. And she came into the studio in Calgary, and she hopped up on the table with her guitar, with her rubber boots on. And she sang, and she played, and she talked to the students, and she spoke passionately about songwriting, and she encouraged the students to explore songwriting of their own. The, the, students, the students will never be the same again. I mean, our learning community is never the same again with, with the insight and the enthusiasm from these visiting artists. It's incredible. I mean, this is much like, it's much like when a village was visited by a fiddle-playing fisherman who played songs that never been heard before in the region. And these young musicians, upon hearing these songs from the fishermen, would never be the same. They'd never be the same again. Now, Tommy is a grade 12 student in Port Hope Simpson. Tommy joined my music class in grade 11 from Port Hope Simpson, at which time he's already a very active musician. Tommy is a composer, and he, his, his musical medium of choice is his computer. He uses very complex pieces of software to, to arrange hundreds of sound samples into original pieces of music. And I said to Tommy, when I met him first, I said, how did you learn to do, how did you learn to do that? He said, YouTube, <laughs> like you would. When, when I met Tommy, I, I, I knew he needed specialized instruction. So I introduced Tommy over the internet to Greg Hocko. Now Greg is a Toronto-based composer, and Greg is responsible for a, a great deal of the music you hear on the popular TV program, Republic of Doyle. Greg uses the internet to tutor Tommy on how to compose music for TV and film. Tommy is now considering a, a career in music after he finishes high school. This is something that the online learning community has offered Tommy. He's, he has offered him a possibility to pursue his career, uh, an interest, first of all, but possibly a career that he could never have done through his offline community of Port Hope Simpson. Now, we've already seen that Many communities within our province, it's difficult for musicians or young musicians to get even a basic music education. In some, of course not all, but in some, that's the case. But if you're somebody like Tommy, who wants to pursue music after you finish high school, that problem becomes dire. Because in order to be accepted into a university music program, you have to have an extremely high level of musicianship. 
And the only way to get that is by long-term concentrated study with a, with a very specialized music teacher. Now, music teachers of that caliber, they're hard to find in urban centers, let alone on the northern coast of Labrador. Now, in high school, high school is a time when, when I realized that I had to pursue a career in music. And, but as you saw, I lived in Spaniards Bay. So the closest classical violin instructor to me was a 16-minute drive away. I have, I have vivid memories of the snow, the snow falling around me as I rode my motorcycle those terrifying 60 minutes with my violin case duct taped to my back. <laughs> Life in rural Newfoundland. Um, since 2010, we've been working, CDLI has been collaborating with um, Morley University School of Music to solve that problem. Using our province's video conferencing network, we have, we've been, We've, had, we've set up lessons. Professors and graduate level students now give weekly private lessons to students in rural and isolated communities who want to pursue music as a career. And this has been highly successful and we're, we're looking forward to pers for pers continuing this indefinitely. Now, I've been talking a lot about music communities and technology, but ultimately this is about students. Students, they quickly learn to utilize every available opportunity in both learning environments, whether it's Skype, YouTube, school band, or playing with friends. I'm always amazed at the creative ways that they use the tools that are available to them. My student, Ashley Kennedy, is an example of a student whose life exists in both the, the online and the offline communities, but, it, but her music it extends far beyond both those communities. Her influence is far beyond. In 2005, Ashley was studying music at her local high school in Conception Harbor with a population of 400. And Ashley was taking private lessons and she, was, she loved the band Nirvana. And she was creating uh, many piano arrangements of Kurt Cobain's music. Um, through her work with me, she, we explored audio recording technologies and video recording technologies. And at home, she would videotape herself playing her, her piano arrangements, as you can see here. And she decided in 2005 that she wanted, she was going to put her videos up on a relatively new website called YouTube. You guys heard of that? Yeah. Um, we, it, the world was listening. She became very popular. Her videos, her, her Nirvana arrangements have been heard been viewed on YouTube over 1.5 million times. Now, as, as Ashley's music was circulating around the world, she was contacted by the family of an elderly gentleman named Leland. Now, several years previous, Leland had lost a grandson who was also a young musician like Ashley. Now, Leland, he, he loved Ashley's music. Um, the, her, her subtle arrangements of Kurt Cobain's music were gentle and they were heartfelt and they, they connected to Leland in a, in a meaningful way. Her music, Ashley's music, helped Leland connect with the memories of his grandson, which I believe is the ultimate complement of her musical abilities. Leland's full name is Leland Cobain, grandfather of Kurt Cobain. So where do we go next? The internet has changed the lives of our rural musicians in Newfoundland and Labrador but there's still so much to do. There currently exists a great gap between the online community of the internet and the offline community of our, of our traditional bricks and mortar schools. <clears throat> Separately, these learning environments offer great opportunities for learning, but if, if we begin thinking of both of these as one, the learning opportunities are incredible. Now, several weeks ago, my daughter came into the kitchen of our house and she had this massive school saxophone dangling around her neck, and she had a laptop under her arm. And, you know, in the house, I like to think of myself as the source for all things musical. <clears throat> <laughs> so I said, you, might, you want your dad to show you how to play something on that saxophone? Nah. She handed me her laptop. Just get me on YouTube, and I'll figure it out myself. Thank you very much. <laughs> 